Okay, so here we are inside of our demo level. And what I want to do is show you how you can use a fluid surface actor to put the effect of a water puddle right here around our fire hydrant. Now we're going to take this just one small piece at a time, and for starters, we're just going to bring in the fluid surface actor itself, as well as an actor to help us capture the reflection. So let's start off here inside the actor classes browser, and I'm going to jump down to the fluid surface actor. So with that selected, let's close out actor classes, and I'll right click here on the floor where our puddle is, and choose add fluid surface actor here. Now this fluid surface actor is huge. It takes up our entire level just about. What we're going to do is shrink that down and we need to move it up a little bit as well. So to move it up, I'm going to temporarily switch off my drag grid and we'll slide this up a little bit. Not too much. We just want to kind of fill in this puddle area. Then I'll turn the drag grid back on. We also want to scale this down and scaling with the fluid surface actor is a little interesting. If we grab our draw scale, the first field, and set it to 0.125, you'll notice the number immediately switches back to 1, though the surface itself did scale down. So it's like it's relatively scaling, always from a value of 1. Now I'm going to position the actor so that it nicely fills in the area of our puddle without leading any gaps, because really it's just like a sheet. So we could slide it out of the way if we weren't careful. So we'll fit it in like so. Now currently this is just completely black. It's not going to be very good as a puddle. That's going to be partly a material texture. Now that material is going to use a texture that is going to rely on the reflections of our level. So we need to bring in an actor that will simulate those reflections for us. So let's go back into the actor classes browser and I'm going to come under scene capture actor and grab the scene capture cube map actor. I'm going to right click right here on our fluid surface and choose add scene capture cube map actor here. Now that's pretty big and it means that we can't really see our fluid anymore because of its size. So I'm just going to set its draw scale down to about 0.25. The scale of this actor is completely irrelevant. We're just scaling it down to get it out of our way. Now by itself this actor will not really do anything. We need to use a render to texture cube asset in order to really make this shine. So let's go into the content browser and in a blank space I'm just gonna right click and create a new render to texture cube like so. Now we need to give this a package. Let's call this fluid package and let's see RTT cube underscore water reflection. And you can see the texture here. It looks completely green. Don't worry about that at the moment. However, with this asset now selected, let's go ahead and save our package. So I'm going to select fluid package and hit control S and just click save. Now I'm going to select the scene capture cube map actor and press F4 to open its properties. Underneath the Scene Capture Actor, we'll expand Scene Capture, expand Capture, and you'll see the Texture Target. Go ahead and assign our newly created texture there, and if we take a look here inside the view, it now suddenly looks like that actor is reflecting our scene, as if it were a chrome sphere. Now back here inside the Properties, we're going to set the Far Plane to 1024. I'm also going to enable post process and we're going to leave the view mode set to scene cap view lit no shadows. We don't really need to be processing shadows. This is a really small reflective area anyway and because the place is lit the way it is actually seeing those shadows would be a pretty slim chance anyway. Okay so now we've got our reflective surface in place. We have our fluid surface actor in place. Go ahead and save your level. Make sure you also save your package if you need to. And then when we come back, we'll take a look at setting up the material that will kind of help complete the process. All right, let's create the material that's going to go on our fluid surface. So back here in the content browser, right here next to our texture render target cube, I'm going to right click and create a new material. And let's name this M underscore water puddle. And let's drop the casing on the U. 
Now, as soon as this comes in, I'm going to go ahead and select our water reflection texture that we created and then close out the content browser. Select your material node and we will set the blend mode over to translucent because we want this to be clear water so we can see the floor just down beneath. Now we're going to add a texture sample from that uh, texture cube that we put together. So hold down the T key and left click. And we're going to multiply this by 1.5. So I'm going to bring in a constant by holding down the one key and left clicking. And we'll set this to 1.5. And then we're going to multiply those together. So hold down the M key, M for multiply. And we'll just take the texture sample, multiply that by 1.5, and we will plug the result into the diffuse. Now, at this point, you're going to get an error. Don't worry about that just yet. We're going to fix it. Let's move all this stuff up for just a moment. Now, we're going to bring in a reflection vector. So right-click, come down to vectors, and grab a reflection vector. And then we're going to run that through a component mask. So come down underneath utility and you'll see component mask. Set your component mask to R, G, and B. Connect in your reflection vector. And then we're going to plug this into the UVs of the texture sample, which will make our error go away. And so now we can see the reflection of our level. Pretty cool so far. Now, let's move all this stuff up slightly. Make a little bit of room. I'm going to create a brand new constant, so hold down the 1 key and left click. We're going to set this to 0.75 and then feed that into opacity to make this just a little bit clear so we can kind of see through it. Now, we're going to add a fluid normal. Now, what this does, this is going to allow us to apply the normal of our fluid surface to kind of ripple the result of our texture. Now, you can combine this with an actual normal map using some of the techniques we talked about in the material lessons, if you so desire, but we're going to leave this example fairly simple. So let's right-click, go underneath Texture, and there is a fluid normal. Now, let's grab this and just plug it straight into our normal. We're also going to use this as a way to help us handle distortion, but we really need to crank up the overall value so we can do that. So I'm going to bring in a brand new constant. So again, hold down the one key and left click. We'll set this to 50, so pretty high. Now we're going to multiply this by the fluid normal. So bring in a new multiply with the M key and left clicking. Connect up our constant and our fluid normal and we'll connect the result to our distortion. And that's just going to cause a nice distortion value as the uh, surface of our uh, fluid tends to ripple. All right, now we're going to do a couple of other things. If we come back over to the properties of the material itself, scroll down to translucency, and we're gonna set up one layer distortion, which is kind of something that's specific to setting up fluids. Now we need to apply this to our fluid surface actor. So we're done here. Let's go ahead and apply our changes. We'll close out of the material editor. Let's open up the content browser. And I'm going to grab my package and make sure that gets saved. Let's select our fluid surface actor. I'll double click it to open up its properties. And then we're going to jump down underneath fluid component. And then down here underneath fluid surface component, you'll see the fluid material. Go ahead and select M water puddle and click your use selected object in content browser. Give that a second to calculate. And now if we take a look, we now have a fluid surface. As a matter of fact, we should be able to jump in at this point and test, though our result is going to be a little bit on the extreme side. However, go ahead and save your, your work so far. Go to save your package, save your level, and then when we come back, we're going to take a look at editing the properties of this fluid to get a more realistic result. Okay, let's wrap up our fluid surface example. In this video, we're going to set up some properties to give our fluid a bit more of a realistic overall behavior, and we're going to set up an effect to make it look like that water is dripping into the surface and that it's creating little ripples as it drops. Now, in between videos, I did rebuild my lighting, and after doing that, our reflections are now coming in, as you can see. So we can actually play the level, and we can see reflections. Now, currently, our fluid just goes crazy when anything hits it. 
So let's start off by adjusting some properties to calm that back down. So I'll double click my fluid, let's exp expand the fluid component, and we're going to start off with fluid damping, which I'm going to set all the way up to 10. That's going to really take out a lot of the energy that's being pumped into that fluid. Now fluid height scale, we're going to pull that way down to 0 0.05. And that's going to take those waves and really make them a whole lot smaller. We'll take the travel speed and cut that in half to 0.5. Now moving down from here, we're going to play with our uh, detail a little bit. So let's take our detail uh, size and pull that in half down to 250, just to give us a little bit more detail. you got to be careful with the setting, though, uh, because if you set it too small, it can look like your ripples just kind of go away. Now, just sort of a cool area to point out, you have fluid debug as well. This allows you to visualize a lot of different things about how your fluid is behaving. And one of the ones that's really cool to see is uh, show detail normals. Let's go ahead and switch that on. And then if we jump into the level, take a look in the upper left corner, we actually get a picture that shows how the ripple normal is being calculated. So it's pretty fun to play with. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump back in and turn that back off. So there's just a few settings so that now when we test out the level, we no longer have those really, really crazy ripples. We just have some nice ripples that spread out across the surface. Now let's set up a system that will give us some nice drops. And we're going to set this up so the drops appear to be coming from this coiled up hose. I'm going to jump into the content browser. And I have the P water drips long package, or I'm sorry, particle system here inside my package. Now what this is, this is a copy of the P water drips long uh, that already exists with UDK. And all that I've done is taken the initial location and I set the start location to a constant distribution instead of a uniform. So we can give it just a, a set location of zero so it's not quite so spread out. And then I went underneath spawn and took the spawn scale and pulled that down to 0.1, which gave us a lot less drops than we had before. Now I'm just going to take this and drag it into my map, and we'll go ahead and switch over to real time so we can see this starting to drip. Now I want to position this just underneath the edge of the hose, or right underneath the, the open end of it, which we can see here in wireframe. So I'm going to make sure that my drag grid is off for just a moment, just so I can get some really tight control and we'll put this right underneath the end of the hose. A little bit of editing to get it just right. That looks pretty good. Maybe right about here. Now you'll notice the particles also go up above the hose, but the texture that's on those particles doesn't go up much further, so I think we can leave it just like that. Now we need to set up the actor that will cause the ripples in the surface of our water. So let me turn my drag grid back on just to be on the safe side. And we're going to jump over to the Actor Classes browser, and you'll see the Fluid Influence Actor listed just above uh, Fluid Surface Actor. Let's go ahead and right-click right here on the surface of our fluid, and we'll add Fluid Influence Actor. Now that immediately starts to ripple the surface of your water. Now we're going to change some settings here, so let's press F4. Expand Fluid Influence Actor, expand the Influence Component. Now, by default, this is set to Fluid Wave. Let's switch this to Fluid Raindrops. Then we're going to take the Fluid Raindrops and set some properties inside of it. So let's start off with the Raindrop Area Radius. We're going to pull this down to 8. Raindrop Fill Entire Fluid, we're going to turn that off. Raindrop Radius, we're going to pull down to 2. Raindrop Rate to 0.875 to really slow down the rate of those drops. And then finally, the Raindrop Strength, we're actually going to double up to 10. Now if you carefully position this, you can put it right underneath where those drops are coming down from the hose. And while they're not going to be timed exactly, if we jump into the level at this point, we can see that it really does look like the water is dripping into the puddle and creating a rippling surface. So that's a look at how we can set up a quick fluid surface info to get a nice puddle effect. Very cool way to add some extra detail into your levels. That is going to wrap things up for this video. Be sure to save your level and your package, and I'll catch you on the next video.